Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Matt Stryker here on behalf of Fight TV, and I'm excited as we are ahead of the May 16th debut, highly anticipated worldwide, of Cage Fighter. And joining me is a face that a lot of combat sports fans will recognize. But now you've become a movie mogul. Once then it's <laughs> Christian, now it's Jay Rizzo. Jay, what's up, man? Hey, you should be excited. <laughs> There's a, a, little inside. It's a little inside joke. <laughs> quite a bit of history between you and I. I'm sure we'll get into that here. But what I really like about this for this particular film and what, why you did what you did. So May 16th at 7 p.m. It's a staggered start time all around the world. So if you're in Melbourne, 7 p.m., Essex, 7 p.m., Willowdale, Ontario, 7 p.m. <laughs> how, how important was it amongst the producers and the executives at Fight to make this available to everyone when people are so thirsty for content? Yeah, it just seemed like um, like like a good opportunity to 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 get the the, the movie out there. You know, um, obviously with everything that's going on in the world, um, with everything kind of at a standstill, um, it, it's just um, it, it makes sense for for Fight TV to you know have you know content to to put out there with obviously nothing with, with very few live shows going on. Um, it's just. Uh, I think it'll, this this movie it will be a good escape for um, you know for pe for people to, to check it out and provide a couple hours of entertainment and obviously you know it's the type of movie that's it's very relevant with what's kind of going on um, in both wrestling and MMA you know we've seen um, over the last couple of years a lot of pro wrestlers kind of making that transition so absolutely and we'll dive further into to the plot but another thing about you as the executive producer that I found interesting is. Obviously, there are other people that want to get their hands on this. There are distribution deals, et cetera. But for 24 hours on May 16th, it's available here on Fight. And that's because you wanted the combat sports fan, the fan that pretty much helped you along your way, the pro wrestling fan, the MMA fan, to have the opportunity to see this, to see it first, to say they were a part of it. Again, that speaks to what you want to give back, I feel, no? Yeah, it's a unique opportunity. It really is. I mean, you know, you think about the um – the options out with streaming services and, and you know this is just uh, you couldn't ask for a, for a better platform to show show this and like you said um you know I, i've i'm a pro wrestler it's in my blood i'll be a pro wrestler forever so um this even though this isn't a pro wrestling movie it's a, it's an mma movie but you know it's the same tree different branches right um yes. it's uh, um so yeah it's, it's very cool to be able to put this out for for um combat sports both mma and pro wrestling fans we know that they're kind of one in the same uh, so it's uh, very exciting now as an athlete the world knows your accolades a pioneer a trailblazer but let's talk about the executive producer now i made the joke the movie mogul what exactly <laughs> is the role of the executive producer on a film such as this i don't know it sounds better than what it, <laughs> it's, it's a screen me, credit <laughs> it gives, yeah it pretty much gives me a cool title um you know i had um, done some work on a small movie a couple of years ago called super grid in Regina um, for a, a producer named Hugh Patterson. And uh, he knew Shane Potzlocker, who is uh, a producer on this movie. And, you know, he kind of had shown the script. He said, oh, you got to show it to Jay. He's a good dude. You know, he'll maybe be able to help you out with some of the, the wrestling stuff in the script. So they sent it to me and I just gave, made a couple suggestions. And next thing you know, they're asking me to be an executive producer. And like I said, I think it just sounds cooler than, <laughs> it just gives me a cool title. <laughs> sure. It's, it's, it's another thing for you to, uh, yeah. to put on the resume. Yeah. But, yeah. So now as having that quote unquote title, does that impact your acting? Because you're also on screen in this film as well. And as long as I've known you, you've always been a performer, always creative. People always come to you, hey, what should I do here and there? How much does it impact your role as a performer? Uh, none. You know, it, it was, uh, you know, I just, I actually didn't want to be in the movie. I was like, no, <laughs> of course you know, not. I, I, and uh, no, not that I, I just didn't want to be like, Oh, I'm the guy that's like, yeah. Right. And then puts, you know, I just didn't want to do that. And they were like, no, no, there's, we have this kind of, um, you know, it was, it's was a, it a good role, uh, uh, integral role for the, for the movie, but doesn't, um, you know, overstay its welcome at all. So it was, uh, it was a fun, <laughs> it was, it was a fun thing to do. And I'm, and I'm glad I had a chance to, to I'm glad I let them talk me into it. Fair enough. So, so you played that one as true to life as possible. Make your impact. Don't stay too long and get out. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, in, in the pro wrestling world, arguably, there's no one hotter than, than John Moxley. And he's, mm. he's featured huge part of this film. I want to talk a, a bit more about the man behind the wrestler, Mox. Uh, how is he as an actor? How are his uh, MMA skills? Can he roll? 
Yeah, and uh, for one, I'd, I'd understood before this that he was doing MMA training, which kind of also, um, when the I think he was what everyone had in mind as far as um, for this role. And um, actually, when the when it came time to cast it, um, he was about to become a free agent, so it was um, kind of a, a good time. And and um, like I said, it, it, I think he was the one that everybody felt could nail this character, just the, the type of persona that this character has and the fact that he had done some training. Um, so and like I said, it didn't matter if he was in, in WWE or AEW or New Japan, I think he was going to be the, the, he was going to be the guy. So um, he, he did really well. He, he, he killed this, uh, this character. Like he really did a great job. And uh, so, um, you know, I think it's just one of those things too, where when, um, those creative juices are flowing and you think you can sink your teeth into something. And um, I think he, he did that. As performers, there are times where we know in a moment that you have chemistry with someone else. Were there any funny stories from production or any stories where you, as this sage wise, eye executive producer said, wow, he's got it. Um, no, I just think that the, uh, um, I, th I think the chemistry between the two main actors was was pretty apparent um i think that they wanted to help each other out uh, which is you know goes back to to when you're even wrestling a match you know it's the same type of, of vibe when you're when you have that willingness to to help each other and want the other one to do well i think that comes off on screen yeah absolutely 100 percent. all right also outside of us our world the combat sports world this appeals to the mainstream as well gina gershon's in this film as well yeah. as chuck liddell who has crossover appeal how important is it to this vehicle yeah, I mean, obviously, when you have uh, big names attached, and you know, you you know, you talk about credibility, it doesn't get any bigger than Chuck Liddell as far as MMA goes. You know, um, obviously, um, probably the, the the face of the UFC for how many years? You know, yeah. kind of put MMA on the map. Like that was kind of when it really started to become big when the Iceman was the light heavyweight champion, and uh, so to have him as a featured part of the movie, um, Luke Rockhold as well, who was a former world champion. Um, it just gives credibility to, you know, the, the, what it is that we're doing here, that the big names wanted to attach themselves to this. And obviously when you're working with people that are better than you, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it makes it easier to, to raise your game. Yeah, what would you know about that, huh, buddy? Okay, I, I know that there's a, a line. It was, it was hard to get you for this time that we've carved out, so I do appreciate it. I like to think that our relationship helps. But uh, <laughs> before we let you go, there's a, there's a lightning round. But I just want to know, is there one thing that you would hope people take away from watching this particular film from May 16th, 7 p.m. across the board, available for 24 hours only? And then afterwards, there's a Q&A that people are going to receive if they have the film here on Fight. What's the one takeaway, Jack? Yeah, just I think that the more than anything, just that the, the people are entertained, you know, and that we did justice to to um, both MMA and pro wrestling. And, you know, uh, it, it's it's cool to kind of, you know, see a pro wrestler not cast in that kind of, um, you know, parody type role in a movie. And um, I, I think people are going to be pleased with how both sides are represented in this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it allows the viewer to understand that there is someone behind the character in the same way for Mox, the same right. way for you. Okay, so now lightning round. I took some questions from social media. I've got to do it. I've got to ask the first one. Obviously, will we ever see you in a professional wrestling ring again? <laughs> no. Fair enough. Okay. And uh, the second one comes from at I love to put myself over. Is it true that you once put Matt Stryker in the Undertaker's Hell's Gate submission and he escaped quickly and you were frightful of his MMA skills? <laughs> Was that you that that sent that no yeah. that was at i put myself over daily so that's probably tom <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is true it was a dark uh battle royal they and um uh and there matt was was terrified of the undertaker um <laughs> so uh, you you we we found ourselves on the mat and i said and i said hell's gate and you uh you scurried away like a like a scared puppy no, no, I escaped and you looked at me with wide eyes because you were in a vulnerable no, position. No, no, I, 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 yes. thought, I thought it was the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. Jay, I got to tell you, on behalf of everyone, first and foremost, uh, thank you for your contributions as an athlete. I know that's something that's not lost on us. Thank and you. you love thank that. You. Secondly, as a friend, man, you've always been real good to me and you've been a friend to the MMA and the, and the pro wrestling combat sports community. It's evident by what you're doing with this film. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Good to, good to see you. 
All right, uh, guys, it's on fight. It's May 16th. It's 7 p.m. across the board. Check your platforms. Jay Rizzo, Matt Stryker. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.